welcome back to another video today i'm here to share some recipes which i prepared for an iftar party in this video i'm sharing the whole party menu and its recipes so from this you will get a freeze and store snack recipe and a recipe of two different snacks which you can make out of a single batter and a sweet samosa recipe and some dinner recipes too so stay tuned the recipes are ahead now let's start with a cheese cutlet recipe it's a freeze and store type snack i'm just preparing it on the previous day for that boiling three potatoes potatoes are boiled now next we are going to boil chicken here i'm taking 400 grams of bone in chicken you can use boneless too add some water 1 tablespoon of olive oil salt for taste and 1 teaspoon of black pepper powder then pressure cook the chicken till it is done meanwhile we can mash the potatoes here the chicken is cooked well now we can deep on the chicken after that shred the chicken pieces next to the mashed potato add this whole chicken and to this add half teaspoon of garam masala 1 teaspoon of garlic powder and half teaspoon of black pepper powder and we'll mix it well after mixing it add 1 teaspoon of soy sauce and add 1 handful of celery leaves or coriander leaves and 3/4 cup of mozzarella cheese salt for taste then combine it very well here the mix is ready now so take small bowls and make it into your desired shape for cutlet here we made all the cutlets next we have to coat this cutlets with bread crumbs for that take an egg and beat it well then dip your cutlets in egg first after that coat it with bread crumbs so that's all your cutlet is ready now we can make all the cutlets in the same way and here all the cutlets are ready now before frying we have to freeze it for 1 hour but here i'm making this for the next day so after freezing for 1 hour i'm changing all this to a ziplock cover so the packing is done and both these packets will go to the freezer next day before frying take the cutlets out of the freezer at least 2 hours before frying now i'm just frying it in an iron kadai deep fry it just wait till it is golden brown in color and take it off don't fry it more or else the cheese from inside will ooze out so our cheese cutlet is ready here show a recipe of a drink which i served for the party and it is custard shake for that in a bowl add 3 tablespoon of custard powder and this custard powder is vanilla flavored and add some water and make it into a paste then keep a saucepan on your stove top and add 4 glasses of milk to that add 4 tablespoon of sugar milk then keep it in a low flame to boil and don't forget to stir continuously now it is starting to boil at this point of time you can off the flame then leave it to cool down to room temperature after it is cooled down you can change that to a bowl then close it with a lid and refrigerate it for 3 to 4 hours after 4 hours take it out from the refrigerator and pour it into a blender and blend it 
again blend it by adding some milk around one glass of milk and here our custard shake is ready and while serving you can add some fruits or nuts to it here I'm adding some pomegranates and our next recipe is a sweet samosa so first of all we'll take a plantain and cut it into small pieces in this way and take one egg and beat very well and keep that aside now take an iron kadai and add a small piece of butter to it and adding the plantain which we cut into small pieces then mix well to that then to that add 2 tablespoon of sugar and mix again The beaten egg scramble it well when the egg is scrambled well add three tablespoon of desiccated coconut you can add fresh coconut too then again mix very well so here our filling is ready we can off the flame now making a paste of all purpose flour using water for sticking the samosa sheets. Now the filling is ready and take a samosa sheet and we can fill it in this way. So here all our samosas are ready. Now we can deep fry it. When it is golden yellow in color, you can take it out. So our sweet samosa is also ready. Next we are going to make a fruit salad in which you don't have to spare much time. Just you have to take some fruits which you are having. I am taking apple, banana, pomegranate, dried apricots, plums and a little dates. You can add all these fruits into a bowl. Then adding strawberry flavored yogurt to it, adding 2 cups first, then mix it gently, again add 1 more cup, mix again, and that's all, you can garnish it with some pomegranates or any nuts. Our fruit salad is ready here, it is very easy to make, do try it out. Next, I am showing a recipe of two snacks which is totally different in taste but made out of same batter. In that, the first recipe is Dahi Vada. It is a simple version. It is usually made using Moong Dal but here I am using chickpea powder. Take two cups of chickpea powder and add some water. Make a thick paste. Then to that add 2 tablespoon of all-purpose flour, mix well, and salt for taste. Then add half teaspoon of baking powder, then add 1 whole onion chopped and mix well. After that add 1 tablespoon of ginger chopped, a handful of coriander leaves and mix it well. After that add 1 tablespoon of green chilli chopped and the batter is ready. From this batter take a small portion using a tablespoon and pour that to the hot oil to deep fry it. When it is cooked well take it off from the hot oil and directly dip to the cold water and let it soak for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, take a bowl and add 1 cup of curd to it, then mix it well, then add some salt and pour half glass of water to it, mix again and next take a serving bowl and add 1 layer of curd to it. And 
keep it aside and here the vadas are soaked well so take it off and squeeze the water off and arrange all the vadas above the curd and next again add some curd and repeat this layering you have to cover all the vadas completely in the curd For tempering this dahi vada, spread some mustard seeds and curry leaves in oil and pour that to this dahi vada. Now you can garnish it with some coriander leaves and some chili powder. That's it. Our dahi vada is ready. Now using the same batter, we are going to make another recipe, another snack that is egg bhaji. You don't have to make another batter so for that boil some eggs then cut the hard boiled egg into two or four and dip the egg pieces into the batter coat it well after that pour that to the hot oil and deep fry it that's all our egg bhaji is ready it is as simple as that you'll get two recipes from a single batter so now we are moving to the dinner recipes and it is starting with rice dumpling in beef so for rice dumpling take four to five shallots a green chili and some curry leaves and grind it well and take a saucepan add some coconut oil add this paste to it when coconut oil is hot and saute well then add some water the measurement is for 2 cups of rice powder, I am adding 2 and 1 fourth cup of water. Then add salt for taste. Then let it boil for that. Close it with a lid and wait till it is boiling. Now the water is boiling so next we are going to add the rice powder. Here I am adding 2 cups of rice powder. You have to reduce the flame and add the rice powder and using the back of a spatula mix it very well when water is reduced completely off the flame and mix continuously after combining it well close it with the lid and keep it for 5 to 10 minutes meanwhile we can make the beef curry for that take some shallots around 10 to 12 shallots 7 to 8 garlic cloves 2 green chilies 1 inch size ginger and some curry leaves now we can grind this to a paste and here the paste is ready and I have taken around 500 grams of beef which is cleaned and washed well taken in a pressure cooker add this paste to it completely then add half tomato diced 1 teaspoon of black pepper powder 2 tablespoon of coriander powder 1 4 teaspoon of turmeric powder 1 teaspoon of red chilli powder and now we can mix it add 2 tablespoon of coconut oil and salt for taste and mix well now it is combined well now we can add half glass of water to it mix again and close it and pressure cook till it is done next we can check the dough for rice dumpling we can mix it again using a spatula after mixing it spread that to a flat surface and knead this well to a soft dough Here our dough for rice dumpling is ready. So take small portions and make it in the small round sheets in this way. Here we made out all the rice dumplings. Now we have to cook it by steaming. For that keep a saucepan with some water and let the water boil. And keep the colander with whole rice dumplings over the saucepan. 
and steam till it is done. On other hand, our beef curry is getting ready, so off the flame. Next, we have to grind some coconut for that roast it first. So, taking half cup of coconut in a saucepan or an iron kadai, then add one teaspoon of coriander powder, half teaspoon of fennel seeds, and some curry leaves. Mix in between, or else it will burn at the bottom. Then add half teaspoon of garam masala and two to three shallots. and half teaspoon of fenugreek seeds and roast it till it gives a good aroma after that off the flame now we can check the rice dumpling it is cooked well we can off the flame so now we can keep this aside next let's grind the roasted coconut by adding half glass of water and the paste is ready here so next we are checking the beef curry here the beef is cooked well so adding the ground coconut paste mixing it well and we can add some water and let it boil when it starts boiling we can add the rice dumpling to it and mix well boil for 4 to 5 minutes don't forget to mix in between after that off the flame then garnish it with some coriander leaves and here our rice dumpling with beef curry is ready so next we can go for chapati it is layered chapati using wheat flour so for that take an egg and add half glass of milk to it then mix it well and then keep it aside now take a mixing bowl and take two cups of wheat flour add some salt and mix the egg milk mixture to it give a good mix and add two tablespoon of vegetable oil mix again next add some water and knead it well to a chapati dough so here our chapati dough is ready now we can wrap it in a cling film and keep it for 30 minutes after 30 minutes open it and make it into small balls for chapati now roll each balls to a chapati by spreading some rice flour and to that chapati spread some ghee or butter then fold two sides of the chapati in this way again spread some ghee and fold other two sides spread some more ghee then fold all the four corners to the center and do the same with all other bowls next take one folded chapati and roll it into a square shaped chapati that's all now we can shallow fry these chapatis Fry till both sides are cooked well. That's all you can see a multi layer chapati here. And our final recipe is a tomato chicken curry. It gives a slight taste of tomato. So, for that, take 4 to 5 dried red chilies, half tablespoon of black pepper corn, 4 to 5 garlic cloves. Half inside ginger and two tablespoon of lemon juice. Grind this into a paste. To this paste, add two tablespoon of tomato sauce, half teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of coriander powder, and salt for taste, and mix it well. Now keep this aside, and here I have taken around 800 grams of chicken. To that, add the paste and marinate it well now keep this aside for 30 minutes now here i have taken a earthen pot keep that on a stove top and add coconut oil around one tablespoon of coconut oil 
when oil is hot enough add three onions chopped finely add salt for taste and saute well when it is translucent add half teaspoon of turmeric powder one teaspoon of chili powder and mix well after that add one tablespoon of tomato sauce to it and mix again then add puree of one whole tomato and mix it again now close it with a lid and cook it well for 3 to 4 minutes after 4 minutes just open and see add the marinated chicken to it and combine well after combining add 3/4 cup of water and mix it then close it with a lid and cook it for 30 minutes in between give a mix or else it will stick at the bottom after 30 minutes you can see the chicken is cooked well now you can open the lid and cook it for 5 more minutes the gravy is reduced and the tomato chicken curry is ready here now you can garnish it with some coriander leaves so that's all the final recipe tomato chicken curry is also ready so that's all about the video and the iftar party menu I hope you all liked it. If you liked it, please give a big thumbs up and do share it with your friends. And if you're interested to watch such type of videos, do subscribe to this channel. So thank you so much and have a nice day.